five years ago, I reviewed one of the best soundbars that you could find for your gaming setup, the Creative Sound Blaster Katana. It literally changed my perception of speakers in general because I was always tied down to a 2.1 setup where there were more cables to manage and uh, honestly, I wasn't really impressed with the audio quality, at least for my budget, until that thing showed up and it basically just blew my mind and it took over my space and it's been living under my monitor for the past five years. A lot of you guys have asked me about it on Twitter and even in the YouTube comment section. Basically, if anyone was asking me, you know, Ebert, what's the best speaker that I can get for $300 or a soundbar? This is what I would always recommend. Well, today we have a new kit on the block from Creative Labs, and it's called the Katana V2. Now, just to be clear, this isn't replacing the original Katana. In fact, Creative is planning on selling it alongside the V2. Uh, now, this new sound system actually brings a bit more notable features that I actually see myself using these days. So let me walk you through my experience with the V2 and answer the most obvious question that may pop up into your heads. Is it any better than the original? So let's get to that, but first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. The Deepcool AK620 CPU cooler is a dual tower heatsink with six copper heat pipes and an attractive fin array to deliver competitive cooling performance while looking awesome. It's surprisingly quiet at full load, installation is hassle-free, and RAM clearance is flexible if you move the fan. Check out the AK620 down below. So the first thing I wanna mention is the price, because with every iteration of a product, that's the one factor that constantly goes up. And in this case, it's actually not that big of a jump. It's $330 versus $300 for the original Katana. So what does that extra $30 bring to the table? Well, let's start with the design. Uh, Creative has actually minimized the aggressive styling to something that would blend in with any workspace or um, even a mini home theater setup. So it's more streamlined with the edges being flat versus the angle sides that you get with the original Katana. I mean, the inspiration behind the Katana was the Katana. So they decided to take a step back and just give it a clean look, which I like. Basically, it just looks like another soundbar. As for size, it's the same compared to the older model. So if you plan on upgrading from the older Katana, uh, this won't actually take that much space. It's basically the same footprint. Uh, and uh, it actually lives easily under your 24 inch or 27 inch monitor. However, the dedicated subwoofer is noticeably larger compared to the older one. And they've increased the size of the driver from five and a quarter inches to six and a half inches. Build quality is solid. The top panel is made out of brushed aluminum while the rest of the body is made out of plastic and it's put together really well. Besides, this thing is gonna be staying stationary anyway, so I don't think build quality matters that much. Um, the function buttons are more tactile and satisfying to press. There's actually uh, a little bit more throw to it versus the mushy feeling that I had with the original Katana. However, you can use the upgraded remote control, which I'll talk about shortly, to adjust the settings, so that's cool. They've added an LED display at the front versus the integrated matrix screen on the original soundbar. It's actually sharper and easier to read, and it shows the basic things like which mode you're in, the volume level, the source, and um, you can adjust the brightness level as well. Interestingly, they've brought the three and a half inch headphone jack from the back to the front right beside the display. And I believe that this is a thoughtful change since if you wanna quickly plug in your headset, if you don't wanna bother your neighbors at night or something like that, um, it's right there and it's easy to access instead of fiddling the cable um, you know, at the back. Now, for those of you who are wondering how good the built-in DAC is, well, it's freaking incredible, guys, and I'm really serious. It actually puts my Apogee Duet audio interface that I use to monitor my audio for production to shame. I just got my hands on the Epos H6 Pros and the way how it drives the bass, it just makes you feel more connected to what you're listening to. It's deep and tight and the trebles are just, mwah. I mean, that's just for the audio jack. Just wait until I get to the speakers. Now taking a look at the IO situation and what we have here is a similar setup compared to the original Katana. There's power in, a port for the dedicated subwoofer, optical and auxiliary jacks, USB type C versus micro USB on the original Katana, which is always welcome, and a Super X5 USB port that can be used to plug in Creative's Super X5 dongles that come with their headsets like um, this Creative SXFI feeder. And then there's the addition of an HDMI ARC port. Now, for those of you who are wondering what ARC is, it's essentially an audio return channel that offers a two-way communication between devices over a single HDMI cable. So let's say if you have a TV with HDMI ARC support, you can actually simply plug in the Katana V2 into that and then control your audio using the IR controls from your TV remote. 
it's essentially a simplified experience uh, if you plan to use the Katana V2 as your main audio device with your TV. It was something I wish the original Katana had, but hey, it took them five years to add one, so I'm pretty stoked to use this feature when I set up my living room. Now, the cherry on top of this is that if you plan to wall mount your entertainment setup, Creative actually includes wall mounting brackets in the box for easy installation. So what they've done here is basically take a soundbar that was meant to live underneath your monitor and expand its use case to something that you may be able to use with your living room or whatever scenario you see yourself taking advantage of HDMI arc. Now, as usual, you still get Bluetooth functionality. In this case, it supports Bluetooth 5.0. Just keep in mind that it's SBC codec only, so you don't get AAC or LDAC support. And as for range, uh, it covers up to 10 meters uh, of range in an open area, but if you have walls and all that kind of stuff, then that would suffer. Honestly, I didn't really experience any interruptions here in my smaller studio space, but I don't plan to use Bluetooth as much as I would with this Katana because the real deal comes with just you know, plugging in it directly to a source. The built-in RGB lighting is still here and the diffusion is gorgeous, guys. It looks amazing at night. There are seven effects that you can cycle between, like color wave. Solo lights up the entire LED array with a single color that can be customizable through the software. Pulsate, Morph, and my personal favorite, Aurora. Now, if you plan to set it up with your PC, there's actually dedicated driver software that comes with the V2 uh, called the Creative App. So let's actually take a look at what it offers. As you can see, the homepage gives you a bird's eye view of all the settings that you can adjust, starting with sound modes, where there are a ton of presets uh, to choose from, including some custom profiles for certain games. The Super X5 button is used to enable the virtual surround sound mode when you plug in a pair of headphones to the audio jack uh, located at the front. Acoustic Engine has options where you can enable surround sound and a bunch of other effects uh, that can be used to fit your style of listening. Uh, you can do the same thing with the headphones as well, which is nice. There is an equalizer that you can play around with. Crystal Voice has a bunch of microphone presets that you can choose from. Scout Mode basically tightens up your directional cue for FPS gaming. The Lighting tab is where you can customize the effects for RGB lighting beneath the soundbar. Uh, decoder allows you to control the dynamic range of your volume. There's a separate mixer tab to monitor the levels. And finally, custom buttons, which essentially lets you program commands uh, to the six buttons uh, included in the remote. Do keep in mind that whatever you do with the software gets directly programmed uh, into the built-in memory profile or the built-in memory of the soundbar. So it comes with you wherever you go. All right, quick change of scenery here because I wanted to test another thoughtful feature added to the V2, which is a built-in microphone. Now, I'm sure most gamers are going to rely on gaming or dedicated headsets for comms, and I would steer away from using a soundbar with a built-in microphone for both listening to and talking to at the same time because those two are just going to clash at each other. But let's just say that you want to attend a quick Skype meeting or Zoom meeting. This will actually get the job done. Creative does say that they've included some noise cancelling characteristics, but um, you know, for my testing, I just didn't really notice that much of a difference. Now. I will say that if you actually go into the Create Crystal Voice tab that's uh, on the driver software, there are a bunch of presets that you can play around with uh, that basically improves your audio quality. So if I go into the microphone equalizer and enable that, now you're listening to preset 11, which improves vocal and quality. Uh, it emphasizes my vocals, which naturally brings up background noise and actually sounds more compressed. But if I switch over to, let's say, preset 5, um, it's just a happy medium where it boosts my vocals slightly. There are just tons of customization that can be done with a Katana V2. But at the same time, I just find it a bit too much because it seems like they wanted to throw everything at the wall to see what would stick. And personally, I'm not a fan of that. I prefer something more streamlined and minimal, but my opinion is subjective. So you may be on the other side of the fence. I want to quickly go over the remote control that comes with the V2 because I just noticed how ergonomic it feels in the hand compared to this tiny one that comes with the older soundbar. Uh, now, this does accept two AAA batteries, which are unfortunately not included in the box, so that's something that you have to get separately. Um, they have added more buttons where you can quickly switch between uh, speakers and the headphone output, dedicated bass level control, and six programmable buttons that I talked about earlier. Finally, let's talk about sound quality. The driver placement is basically the same compared to the original Katana. So there are two two and a half inch mid-range drivers at the top, two three and a quarter inch tweeters at the front, and the six and a half inch subwoofer driver. 
Now, all of this is powered by their multi-core DSP, delivering up to 126 watts of armor's power with 252 watts peak. That's actually 68% more power compared to the older Katana. And guys, let me just tell you, this thing gets super loud to a point where I never crossed the 25% volume level because if I did, I'm pretty sure I would have completely destroyed my ears. Now, having listened to the older one and this back to back, there are a few things that I noticed. First is that the trebles were detailed and more soothing to listen to. Uh, the bass response was a noticeable improvement in power where it's more boomy and tight. It also emphasizes the mid-range frequencies or the little details that you may have missed with the older model. And I'm just genuinely impressed with just how much sound this thing can fill here in my studio. And just given its power output, this thing would do wonders in a larger space without losing that clarity and that punch. Now, um, I listen to a lot of music, and the Katana V2 just simply puts you in a space where you get to appreciate everything that an artist wanted you to hear. But if you do switch things up to gaming, it's a whole other level, guys. Sometimes I feel like tossing away my pair of headphones and sticking to this soundbar because obviously the soundstage is wider, the crystal clear cues that you get as you navigate through the scene just makes you feel more connected to the game that you're playing. And that dedicated subwoofer, man, Ah, if you're looking for something to annoy your neighbors downstairs, which I would highly not recommend, or if you're just looking for, what, what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, sturdy, where it's solid, powerful, and robust when you hit the ammo, this thing is just gonna blow your mind. And that pretty much sums up my experience with the Katana V2. So the real question is, is it really worth it over the original Katana? Absolutely, because for an extra $30, you actually get a lot of features like HDMI arc, wall mounting options, a remote that's just easier to hold, a simplified design that fits in within any workspace, a headphone jack with a ridiculously good DAC. Seriously, I'm thinking about ditching my Apogee Duet for that one. And most importantly, sound quality that makes you appreciate artists and just a breathtaking experience for gaming and watching movies. I just hope that you could find one because the original Katana was a little bit harder to get hands on. And when I spoke with Creative, they actually had a really tough time trying to get hands on with these DSPs because of the chip shortage and all that kind of stuff. So um, they're trying their best to make it available on every retailer site. So I'll make sure to leave links down below if you're interested. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the Creative Labs Sound Blaster Katana V2. Now, if you are using the original Katana, would you actually consider an upgrade? Or if you're actually looking for a soundbar, would this be on your list? It definitely should be because it's so good. It just really is. That's it guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Spend responsibly.